Today we are talking about elephants. I'm Mr. Steyer. This is Mr. Steyer's classroom. Welcome back, scientists. Today, you are going to work to identify the external structures of an elephant. You are going to be able to describe the functions performed by those structures that help an elephant out. Let's do this. <laughs> Today, we are talking about the external structures of an elephant. I just want you to take a moment really quick, and I want you to think about all of the things that you already know about elephants. And I know that you know that there are two kinds of elephants, and today we're really going to be talking about an Asian elephant. And the difference between an Asian elephant and an African elephant is all in the size of their ears. But I know you already know that. So yes, today we're talking about elephants and we're talking about why an elephant's structures, why an elephant's external structures matter. In our previous lessons here, we've talked about plants and the internal and external structures of plants. Now we're moving into elephants and we're gonna talk about how are plants and animals similar in their structures and why do their internal and external structures make a difference? Why do they matter? And we'll compare those later on. So right now we're looking at these six key external structures of an elephant. We are looking at its skin, its ears, its eyes, its nose, its legs, and its feet. And the Asian elephant is the biggest animal in Asia. To get enough energy to survive, the elephant needs to eat an enormous amount of food. No wonder elephants spend most of their time looking for food. And what do they eat? They eat grasses, leaves, roots, bark, and fruit. And so we know that elephants are going to need food. They're going to need those plants in order to have the energy they need to grow, survive, and thrive. Well, here, let's look a lot closer at those six structures and see how they are benefiting the elephant. So the first thing we're gonna start with is we're gonna start with an elephant's skin. So the elephant's skin, it is tough. It is wrinkled skin that protects the elephant's internal organs. The skin also keeps the elephant cool to protect its skin from getting too much sun an elephant may roll in mud or cover itself with dust. The next structure we're gonna look at is an elephant's ears. The elephant's sensitive ears hear all sorts of sounds. Its big ear flaps give off heat, which helps keep the elephant cool. Before we talk about the trunk, do you think that you could name five structures or five functions of an elephant's trunk. Think about it for a second. Five things that an elephant can do with its trunk. The long muscular trunk is both the elephant's nose and its upper lip. The trunk has many different functions, smelling, breathing, trumpeting, and squirting water into the elephant's mouth. The elephant can also use its trunk to grab onto big tree trunks or tiny objects, such as a blade of grass. So those five things would have been smelling, breathing, trumpeting, squirting water, and grabbing things. Next up, let's look at an elephant's legs. The elephant's legs, they're thick and straight and they support the elephant's heavy body. An elephant can walk quite rapidly, but does not run or gallop. So how could an elephant know that a herd of rhinoceroses is running in its direction, even if the elephant could not hear rhinoceroses with its ears? How is an elephant gonna do that? With its feet. Wide feet support the elephant's great weight and allow it to walk quietly. Pads on the bottom of the feet can sense ground vibrations traveling through the ground. 
So that herd of rhinoceroses, the elephant would actually feel it before it can hear it or see it. And then an elephant's eyes. The eyes, they take in the light. They allow the elephant to see its surroundings. So we have these six external structures. And we know that these six structures serve a very specific function for an elephant in order for that elephant to be able to survive. So your job today, your job today is to make certain that you can identify those structures. You can label and identify all of those external structures and that you can explain and describe the functions performed by each of those elephants, six external structures. And you're gonna be thinking about things like, which of those external structures is gonna help an elephant to live with a herd? And you're gonna be thinking, how is the function of an elephant's trunk like that of a human nose? And how is it different? So there's five things that we identified you could do with an elephant's trunk. Can a human do those same five things? How are they the same? How are they different? And remember, when you are writing that in your science notebook here, be specific, be detailed, and be descriptive. You are a scientist. You are writing like a scientist. If you would like to do some more research, you should try to find out more about an elephant's trunk and those other functions that an elephant's trunk can do. There's resources available on the National Geographic website that you could use to help further your thinking if you want to know more about this fascinating creature. We're going to move just like we do with the plant. We moved from the external of the plant to the internal of the plant. And we are going to do the same with our elephant. We're going to study those, these external structures and then move to those internal structures as well. So remember, today, you're making sure that you can identify the external structures and you can describe the functions of all of those structures. Thank you for being with me here today, scientists. I am Mr. Steyer. This is Mr. Steyer's classroom. And I just want to say a quick shout out to all the teachers and students from Centennial Elementary. Hope you guys are all doing well. Thank you. Have a great one. See you, scientists. Bye. Mm -hmm.